Greetings fellow artists. Today I am going to be talking about fabric. Right? Fabric is, uh, is pretty important to me uh, as somebody who makes monuments uh, uh, and uh, public works. Uh, all of the people that I have to do usually have to wear clothes. Right? So, um, so we have to cover up the figures. Whereas much of the work that you might see in my studio are nudes. And those are academic in nature, and um, that's not the way we generally sort of confront the world. Uh, unless you're a toddler, right? Anybody who has toddlers knows that uh, toddlers get to run around uh, in the nude whenever they want. Right? <laughs> um, but <laughs> I digress. Uh, uh, for the rest of us, we have to wear clothes most of the time. So if we're working figuratively, we have to know how to, uh, how to clothe the figure. All right, so for this lecture, which is pretty much just going to be a lecture, I'm just going to talk about things. Uh, I have a couple of examples to show, um, as well as um, a handout that I use from my journal over here. Uh, but, but it's basically going to be me talking about uh, the, the seven basic folds of fabric that are out there. And you'll see a few different kind of versions of that. Sometimes uh, you'll see people uh, getting much more in depth into it and they can find subtle variations. Right? And sometimes people will say there's, there's five or six. Um, I, I don't know that it really actually matters all that much. Uh, for me, I use them in my work and I use them regularly. And so for me, there are seven basic folds. Right? And that's what we're going to be going over here. Right? Uh, so uh, I do have the fabric to show you, I do have a sculpture, but mostly I'm going to be working from my journal. Right? So um, anybody that, uh, that knows me knows that I am a, I'm a pretty active journaler. Uh, I'm pretty sort of well known for, uh, um, for, for drawing bartenders, which is one of my favorite subjects, or uh, at least was in the past uh, before I had young children. But uh, this is an older journal of mine. I'm saying that because I'm looking through it. It's, it's filled with bartenders. <laughs> all right. But uh, in addition to uh, um, uh, all, all the bartenders and random sort of figure drawing and um, sculpture ideas, uh, there's a lot of sort of so sculpture con concepts in here. Uh, I also make handouts for my students. So that's what we're going to be working from today. So um, this is the seven basic deadly folds of fabric. Um, and it's just a couple of pages here. There's some horses on the next page. Uh, and so we're going to be going over it. Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of work off this as if I was in the classroom, right? And I would be handing this out. Uh, I, am, uh, I have PDFs of these and I will make those available uh, with a link um, in the description down below uh, to a, a page off my website. So um, if you're interested in printing these out or just having them, um, you, you're welcome to go and grab those, all right? So as I said, uh, in my way of looking at it, there are seven sort of basic folds, all right? And, and everything really kind of uh, falls into that category. And what it really has to do with, uh, what, with what makes a fold of fabric is, is what's underneath it. Right? So um, it really kind of comes down to sort of weight and gravity and points of tension. Right? So, right? so for the first fold, right? uh, as you can see here, the first fold is the basic hanging fold. Right? So um, the hanging fold is basically when you have a single point of tension. Right? So one single point of tension. So let's take my piece of fabric here. Right? And I have some thumbtacks over here. Right? So this represents a point of tension, but so can this, right? So I can hold this up with a finger, right? And that's a single point of tension, but for the sake of this, right, we will take our thumbtack. Right? And all, you know, gravity, gravity is pulling the sheet down, right? Gravity is pulling the fabric down, but that one thumbtack is, is, is resisting that, right? So you can see it as a sort of like, a sort of battle between the gravity and the point of tension. Right? And so uh, what ends up happening is you can see it's, it pulls in these long, straight sort of tubes. Right? So we get these tube-like forms. So if you notice how as I pull them up, there's one here, there's, another, there's one hidden in here, there's another one there, and one there. Right? And because of the sort of shape of the fabric here, as you can see it's a square that I cut out, right? Right? some of the points are going to sit, because they're on diagonals, a little bit longer. Right? And as you can see a little bit more uh, stylistically in the, um, in the drawing here, right? the, the, my drawing is much more stylistic, right? this is much more naturalistic. Right? Uh, I can tell you one thing that um, as a, now everybody knows I'm primarily a sculptor, right? so as a sculptor, uh, I 
find that fabric is a wonderful place for a certain amount of stylization. So for me, when I sculpt fabric, right, I always use reference. Right? So that could mean I bring a model in um, and you know, we, uh, we, we, we sculpt, uh, for me, uh, as, a, as an artist, I sculpt all my figures in the nude regardless of what they're, um, they're going to be. So you know, here we're looking at this statue over here. Right? This was originally um, uh, posed for and uh, had a model pose for this and it was sculpted in the nude. And then we go about the process of dressing the figure afterwards. Right? Because you, in order to get the fabric to look right, right, you have to have the appropriate points of tension. Right? So that's the body. Right? In this instance, that's the body underneath. Right? So, um, so I then, have the model wear clothing similar, and it, and it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be exact because um, I'm, I'm the sculptor and, and I'm, in, I'm, I'm inventing something that's new. Right? And so I always um, you know, choose the folds of fabric that are most interesting to me. I might make some a little bit more dramatic, a little less dramatic. Um, I, uh, I definitely play with them, right? So if you're working with a model or if we just have a model in class that's, that's posing clothes, you'll always see me up on the stand like, pinching the fabric in certain ways to get it to do things to make it look cooler. Right? So that's why I bring that up in the context of this drawing, that, that, that this drawing is a much more stylized version. It's, it's playing very, it's very neat and, um, uh, and playing by the rules uh, for the sake of me demonstrating something. But you can see that this one is, is a little bit less so. Right? So that's a, the, the first basic fold is the, uh, um, is the pipe fold, right? single point of tension. Right? What if you have multiple points of tension? Right? Let's get another sort of thumbtack here. This one down here. This one will move down a little bit farther. And we'll move down a little bit farther here. Right? Okay. And so what we get here right, is what's called the diaper fold. Right? Number two is the diaper fold. And we have two points of tension. Right? You can see that on this half, of it, this is a single point of tension for this area, because right? there's not a second pin over here to make that. Right? So, so this is really your pipe fold on this outside, but in between the two things where they're kind of falling, um, you get what's called the diaper, um, the diaper fold. And the diaper fold, two points of tension, fabric sags between them, right? note pipe folds on either end. Right? Where do we see that? One uh, takes its name from baby diapers, right? Because they have two pin, you know, now they have little sort of Velcros, but uh, um, they used to have little pins. Um, but it, you also see it in things like superhero capes. Um, you could see it in sort of you know somebody uh, the back of somebody's shirt if it was kind of loose. A lot of sort of loose fitting shirts in the back will make a diaper fold um, because the shoulders are creating two points of tension. Okay. Um, where the cape attaches, or a bandana, or whatever, with it, wh whatever is, is it basically it has one point of tension that's coming up and around, and then because it sits over the trapezius, it's, this becomes sort of the point of tension, and then it sags in between, and you get uh, a superhero cape. Right? Right? Um, uh, so the next one, uh, oh, I don't have a board. Hold on a moment. All right, so I'm back. I have both a, uh, a board right, as well as a pipe. Right? I want to sort of demonstrate this with two of these. Take these out. All right, so so the, the, the drop fold um, is basically something's just sitting on top of something else. Right? So kind of kind of scrum. You know, if you pull it really taut right, across our board like this, right? you know, we pull it really sort of taut like this, right? You you basically get nothing, right? <laughs> so you know the fabric is you know kind of what you want to do with it. And so here we have uh, a drop fold kind of going like this, right? sitting here across the board. Right? It works for anything. Right? So it works the same with the pipe. Right? And again, it can be very stylized, like in the drawing. Right? The drawing is very, you know, it's very neat and sort of orderly. Or it could be you just sort of threw your towel over the rack. Right? And you get sort of all these folds here. Um, you know, it could be, uh, you know, you're waiting tables and you sort of, you know, put your, uh, you know, sometimes 
you know, it works on an arm, right? It's just anything that's kind of hanging over, right? The other example, right, that we have here is, you know, it could be the edge of a table. So you see, it's one type of fold here, and, you know, it's doing all sense. It's basically created by the sort of the tension and the weight. Right? There's a sort of basic drop fold, right? All right, number three, the drop fold. The fabric falls loose and free without any tension. Right? Very common when fabric drapes over something, such as this table or the board up above. All right, and then again in the drawing here, um, note that uh, that we have a little bit of a diaper fold in the drawing there because, um, you know, let's go back to our, our tablecloth version over here. Right? You know, here you're creating different points of tension. Maybe there's uh, they, that's created by the this little still life over here. There was a skull that was you know putting some pressure on. And then as we come over to the corner, right, you get a diaper fold. Right? So, so here we have you know, an example where all three of, our, uh, all three of our, our, our folds that we've gone over thus far are included in this one example. Right? That's going to be the way a shirt is. All right? So all right, you're going to see all of them. All right, let's move on to the next page all right, as they get a little bit more complicated. The next two, um, something strange going on with all of my studio. Um, uh, the next two that we have are, are very, very similar. Excuse me for a moment. Apologize, there's a little, a little commotion out in the hallway. Right? So, the natural distractions of sort of studio life, I guess. All right, so where was I? I was talking about the spiral fold. Oh, and I was talking about um, the similarity between these two things, right? So, so these, two, um, these two folds, the spiral fold and the zigzag fold, right, are really actually, um, they're, they're the same, but uh, in certain ways, but it has to do with how much compression is on them, right? So um, in the one where it's kind of stitched together, all right, so I'm gonna use my, my, my sleeve here as an example. So these, these two folds are particularly important to figurative work because uh, for the most part, um, uh, we are a set of cylinders, right? right? So it's, a, you know, it's the same reason why I talk so much about cross-contouring in, um, uh, in, in figure drawing, right? Or, or talking about sort of putting the clay on and raking across the forms, right? Because we're, we're, we're basically tubes, right? We, 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 you know, you, see, you can see this arm is in, a, in a very sort of simple abstraction as this, and then this, right? Even our torso, right? So the spiral fold is really kind of me doing this, right? It's kind of pushing it up, and you can see how sort of bunched up my shirt kind of gets, right? And what happens is you have the fabric, uh, because the fabric is, in order for my arm to fit inside the fabric, right? My arm is smaller than the, um, the tube of fabric that is going around it, right? So when you compress it up, uh, when you squish it up like that, um, the larger amounts, they start overlapping, right? And so you can see in the little drawing there, right, where you said that the arrow is going in these different directions, right? And these things can be kind of difficult to draw because um, they get very confusing, right? But what you're really looking for is a series of overlaps as they go on. So I'm sort of show that. So if we look in here at the drawing here, right? So it's this, this comes down here like this, and then this one comes around here, but then this one comes here, and this one here, and this one here, and this one here, and that's what this, that's what this is showing here, okay? Right? Um, uh, a good example of that is uh, up at the top of there is that uh, um, a curtain rod, right? Where the, you know, the curtain rod is going through, and then it's kind of, um, we intentionally do that, right? You see the, and your curtains, they, they're kind of scrunched up in that way. Right? So, uh, so that's the spiral fold. Very similar to the spiral fold, right? Very similar to the spiral fold is the zigzag fold, right? Now the big difference between them is that the zigzag fold and my sort of understanding or my way of thinking of it is that the zigzag is like the remnant of, of the spiral. So the spiral, um, it's actively being sort of compressed by whatever forces are acting on it. Um, the zigzag fold is a similar type of thing, but when you loosen that back out, right? So to bring my shirt back here, 
Right? So I go up like this, but then notice when I, when I bring it back down, I can still see that kind of remnant. Right? So this is more like the spiral, and then that is more like the, uh, um, the, the zigzag, right? especially right in kind of here. It's very hard to see on this shirt, right? So you see it on places like the backs of pants, right? So you know, if we move this kind of over, right, right, you can see some of it in here, right? There's some nice examples of, actually, the, I think the better example of it is, is up here, right? So on the back of the arm, right? you can see that zigzag, right? So it's, there, it's not being actively pushed up, but it appears that in the motion as if it has been pushed up previously. Right? So they're, they're looser and they're larger, right? Okay, uh, so those are the zigzag folds, right? Um, moving on, the next one. Now, I don't, I don't know if this is absurd or not, but um, uh, I, I, I see nothing wrong with having favorites of, of certain types of things. And, and I personally have a favorite fold of fabric. Right, so if we go back through here, you know, the, the pipe bolt fold, not that interesting. The diaper fold's a little bit more interesting. The drop fold, kind of boring. Um, the spiral, um, uh, pretty interesting. Zigzag, pretty interesting. But for me, the half lock. The half lock is the one I just think is, is, is the coolest of all of them. Now, what is the half lock? The half lock is what happens when your shirt bends. So, so, so there it is, right there. There it is right there. Um, over on the statue over here, right? There it is right there. This one even has a second of there one. And if you have it here on that part, right, there's another one, maybe a little difficult to see in this angle, there's another one on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it exists on both uh, pants and legs, and if you look at uh, you know, some of my, my public sculptures, you'll see that I, I try at every opportunity to, to make sure that I get it, get it in there. Right? What, what's really happening is you have two cylindrical forms, right? those two cylindrical forms are bending um, and they're causing that to, to crease. So remember, as I said, it's, if you have it on one side, you're going to also have it on the other side. Right? In addition to that, the half lock also creates a point of tension. Right? So, uh, so if you do this and, you have, and that elbow comes out, right, you're going to have a point of tension which is going to give you uh, some additional folds that come out. You can see that in the drawing here. Right? And the elbow comes around and then the point of tension right, is pushing up in this way. Right? Uh, the knee does it as well. Right? You get cool folds of fabric in. Oh, I've been doing that right now. So let me get it in the knee as well. Right. This fold occurs when a, uh, a cylinder of fabric is bent. The fabric compresses on one side and produces increased tension on the opposite side. Right? The half lock. Right. So maybe maybe I've sold some of you, and, you, and you know, maybe now you also have a favorite fold of fabric. If you ever meet me in person, you can ask me about trees because I have I have very I have very strong feelings about very specific trees uh, as well. Yeah. Right, and so, and here's the, here's the last one then, right? Uh, I already have an example of it, right? The, the final fold of fabric is uh, what's called the inert fold. And this is maybe, some people don't really include this one because it's so, um, it's like nothing, but, but, but it happens all the time, right? You, you, you see it all the time. Um, so this last fold occurs when there is no specific tension or compression on the fabric. Variations of all six folds may be present. Right there, it is. Right, right, and then, and then we just do this, and there it is. You know, so you see something here that looks like a half lock. We see something that's like some tension here. You know, maybe some of it falls over, um, and you're seeing something that looks like a little bit of the drop fold. Right, but this is in all kinds of different things. Right, especially in the in the figure drawing classroom, you know, you see it when the model, um, you know, if you, you know, maybe you're uh, drawing the nude model, but the model got up on the stand um, and they're wearing a, a bathrobe, right? So they take the bathrobe off, they put it on the stand, it falls down to the ground, it's, it's, it's all just inert, right? All right. So those are the uh, the seven deadly folds of fabric. Uh, and as, as I see them, uh, and some examples of how I use them in my own work. Right? Um, as I mentioned, I'll put that there should be uh, a link down in the de description uh, where you can download these PDFs. Um, and I hope that I hope that helps out. Talk to you soon.